The purpose of Free Thought Forum is to be vigilant to the encroachment of religion into government and to educate the general public as to what a free thinker is. My thoughts give me power. No scholar can map them. No hunter can trap them. No person can deny. in fry. No person can deny. in fry. I think as I please. Hello, my name is Hugh Henry. Welcome to Pre-Thought Forum. Uh, let's see if I can get the year right this time. We'll be moving to a new day and time in uh, 2003, but we don't know what that day and time will be yet. Our subject today is biographies, uh, short biographies, of famous humans and atheists, and I'm going to be learning a great deal this time myself. We oh. have... <laughs> You're optimistic. We have Catherine Farringer, uh, atheist activist and former host of this program, and Sally Cheezak, a very ac active atheist activist. Catherine, do you want to start out? Sure. Well, of course, people think that we're such a minority. Who ever heard of any any atheist besides Madeleine Murray O'Hare? And so the the general public is is definitely unaware of the famous people through time who have been uh, free thinkers. Um, I use the term free thinker to cover humanist, whatever choice people have personal reasons for picking one title over another. I mean, if you live without God, you're an atheist as far as I'm concerned. So I have this little booklet. It's a publication of the Freedom From Religion Foundation in Madison, Wisconsin. And this is what they said about religion. Now, everybody, of course, has heard of most of these people. For instance, Thomas Alva Edison. And he said, religion is all bunk. Then everybody, a lot of people have heard of Clarence Darrow, famous attorney, right? Okay, Leopold and Loeb, all that. They went to jail anyway, though. Clarence Darrow said, I don't believe in God because I don't believe in Mother Goose. Uh, lots of people read Tom, uh, uh, Mark Twain, and the uh, children read uh, Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. Love that author, just love Mark Twain. Mark Twain said, <clears throat> It's best to read the weather forecast before praying for rain. <laughs> now, not many people, unfortunately, have heard of Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Uh, she was very active trying to get the women's right to vote. And she and, uh, 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 what's her name? Susan, My, uh, B. Susan B. Anthony. Susan B. Anthony, whose name I never can remember when I need to, uh, were very uh, strong in the movement. But Elizabeth Cady Stanton also had another sideline, and that was religion. Uh, while uh, Susan B. Anthony was a Unitarian, Elizabeth Cady Stanton apparently found out a lot, a lot about religion, and she didn't like any of it. She said, the Bible and the church have been the greatest stumbling blocks in the way of women's emancipation. And I do believe that. Yes. Now, I'll let Sally go on, and then I'll come back to some more of these little goodies, because we're just scratching the surface. Yes, and even now, religion is holding back women. Uh, I know. You well, know, today, look, at, look at battered women. That's one. And, yeah. the, and of course, the, the Middle East, where women don't have any rights at all. Mm -hmm. Just really sad. Well, I'm going to talk uh, more about uh, secular humanists. Okay. And although we're some of us are atheists and some of us are uh, pantheists and whatever, almost everyone uh, agrees with some of the things that the that the humanists are. Mm -hmm. You know, they just it's just so interchangeable here. But here's what some people said who didn't like secular humanists. Um, the most dangerous religion in America, that was uh, Homer Duncan. And uh, this this one, historian R.J. Rush Dooney, and I believe, didn't Carol say that he had died? Did he? Uh, the last program she was on? I don't know, but he has a very extreme Christian agenda. Oh, yeah. Oh, about yes. as extreme as you're going to get. This well, is pretty extreme. He writes, It is a well-planned war through the IRS and other government agencies. They are seeking to hinder, harass, and discredit Christian schools and agencies. 
Now that's the humanists that are yeah. doing all these and bad things. And how are they doing yeah. this? Well, mm -hmm. it comes to the hmm. humanists too, but he says, by zoning regulations and heavens, they're told they have to pay unemployment compensation. They seek accreditation by the state. They use state textbooks and teach humanism. Wow. It is one thing for atheists and humanists to be free to propagate their own religion, <laughs> but another to declare war on Christian faith and seek to destroy it through public schools. We are. Uh, you know, yeah, isn't that amazing? Uh, yes. Uh, when when have we ever had the power? Yeah, to do any to do of any that. of these things. When we have Whereas we have they've the got power? all the power and they have done it. They certainly do, and they have all vouchers. The, the whole they have all nine the yards. Breaks. Right, and I I saw this that I oh, think yes. I got it from you, Catherine. Yeah. And is uh, the Just title of this is is humanism molesting your child? <laughs> no, it's a Catholic and, priest. <laughs> and this is from the Shenandoah Church of Christ, and. Uh, I, of course, religion is using humanism uh, as a scapegoat mm -hmm. and uh, secular humanism. So here they have this whole little pamphlet for the children to take home mm -hmm. from school, and it says, what is humanism? Denies the deity of God, the inspiration of the Bible, and the divinity of Jesus Christ. Guilty. Denies the biblical account of creation. I'm not reading all of these. I'm just going to give you all a little. The highlights. Yeah. Believes in sexual freedom from between consenting in individuals regardless of age, including premarital sex, homosexuality, lesbianism, and incest. Gee, I never get on in any of these groups. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. I certainly have, got left out. What happened? Have you ever heard of the humus? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Especially <laughs> incest. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Humanism is referred to by humanists as a faith and a religion. They keep it denying it and denying it. I think uh, Paul Kurtz has, has denied it over and over, and he is has well, now, one of the now, largest organizations. Now wait a minute. If if we were religion. We'd have a building fund, yes, right? Yes, we'd have a building. Oh yeah, we'd, and we'd, we'd have, have a building, and, and we'd, we'd have, have a lot of building. We'd have a lot of suckers giving yeah. us money, so that we can. <laughs> we're not just pursue all those things right. like incest yeah. and. Like, like, like. Well, maybe if we provided all this sexual stuff, we'd you know get more people. I don't. Know. <laughs> we're missing something. These guys might have a point. I. Right. Uh, yeah, well, it's a good what, thing. what else do you about? have? With you not joining in this, well, here's something about why women need freedom from religion. When attempts are made to base laws on the Bible, women must beware. The constitutional principle of separation between church and state is the only sure barrier standing between women and the Bible. And that is so true. But I want to go back to the Lugrini again and read you some more things that famous people that nobody knows were atheists. Cause they, when Isaac Asimov died, he great, greatly admired by lots and lots of people for his, um, uh, what do you call it, science fiction. Loved, their, loved his book. I've never read any of those, but I've read his other stuff. Uh, they had a, about a page and a half, oh, bit, a big section on it, picture and everything. Did they ever mention that he was an atheist? Did of they ever not. mention he was president of the Humanist Association for six years? No. So that's and, why... And uh, Humanist of the Year at least yeah, once. Yeah, at least. And they, then honored by, I think, FFRF as well, Freedom From Religion Foundation. Uh, so people know about, for instance, one of the first famous people I learned about was Thomas Alva Edison. And he's the one that said religion is all bunk. Well, they didn't teach me that. Um, now everybody's, a lot of people have heard of uh, Bertrand Russell, right? Hugh, am I boring you? I'm sorry. <laughs> I was up late night, late, late last night Doing trying to homework. get some of this stuff together. Yeah. Couldn't you, get to sleep. You come up empty handed. Now here is Bertrand Russell's philosophy. I believe that when I die, I shall rot and nothing of my ego will survive. I am not young and I love life, but I should scorn to shiver with terror at the thought of annihilation. Happiness is nonetheless true happiness because it must come to an end. Nor do thought and love lose their value because they are not everlasting. And I think that's lovely. 
All right, everybody's heard of Albert Einstein. Well, there are two schools of thought on Einstein, aren't there? But anyway, my school is much better. <laughs> I'm going to quote you, my you school. You sound like them. Albert Einstein says, I do not believe in the immortality of the individual, and I consider ethics to be an exclusively human concern with no super, super, super. <laughs> We all have Sorry. that. We all have that disease today. I love it. I love it. Just to be going called around. me George Bush. <laughs> None of us got a good night's sleep. Superhuman nice authority behind it. I sorry, Albert. I read your little say. Thomas Paine had a good one. Any system of religion that has anything in it that shocks the mind of a child cannot be a true system. Now I certainly go along with that. This brainwashing kids, I think, is one of the. Every time I see Buckner Fanning with those little kids and talking about God and Jesus, I just cringe. Those sweet little innocent, darling, inquisitive yeah. children. Putting braces on to, their brains already. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, why don't you tell us about the uh, what? this book? Oh, yes. It's well, weighting here, you down. <laughs> yes, it is, and maybe it would be a good idea to tell us about it. Tell us, yes, about it, because it's so heavy. This is oomph, <laughs> oomph, who's who in hell. Oh, my. Yes, who's who in hell, and it's compiled by Warren Allen Smith. And I'm proud to say that I am in it. Oh my. And yes, yes, <laughs> I am in it. And um, that I'm in really good company because lots and lots of swell people are in here. However, I do have a little criticism with his book. Sometimes he'll have one little line and it doesn't, there's more known about some of these people than he puts well, in. Well, isn't Abraham Lincoln in this book also? I think he's in and there. I think it he's in there, but I really, yes, that kind of surprised me too. I thought he was religious. Well, as far as I know, he was. Yeah, Very religious. Well, you know, it's funny. He didn't like those things. His wife, I think he sat down at those silly seances. Well, what am I looking for, Lincoln? Lincoln. Oh. Hey. Yeah, well, I forgot. I forgot. His wife, so his wife was not only clear around the bend; she actually went clear, officially yeah, clear around did, the bend. Yeah, she did. Finally, Lincoln, yes, Abraham. Well, he's in here, and um, so he's in here. So you well, know, just, yeah, well, I wonder it's, it's why. Still, I still think it's up for grabs because there. Are sometimes it says, "Was Lincoln a religious man, or was he not?" Each generation appears to reinvent Lincoln in its own image. Robert Ingersoll adulated our 16th president, and Ingersoll's granddaughter's husband, Sherman Wakefield. Sherman Wakefield, he's the one I have a lot of articles by. I didn't know that. <laughs> See, even I am finding out things. Well, I know. You haven't insisted read this. Insisted <laughs> that relig religion, that Lincoln was not religious. In 1889, Wheeler quoted Lincoln's friend, Ward H. Lehman, as saying, Lincoln read Volney and Payne and then wrote a deliberate and labored essay wherein he reached a conclusion similar to theirs. Well, if he read Payne, then of course Payne was still a, a deist. Yes. Not you know, an atheist, I'm going to defend him. Although, hmm? If you're a politician, though, you, you, you got to wobble. Read, you, you yeah, I think you, like, yeah. Well, it, that, that you may not Lincoln quite was agree a, with. Lincoln was an extremely unpopular politician. He was elected by a minority. He was a dark horse candidate. Uh, in 1864, his party wasn't even going to run him as the, the sta sitting president as a candidate. Uh, he had almost no fans in his lifetime. It was only after he was dead that he suddenly became such a wonderful person. Hmm. He was deeply reviled in the newspaper. They called him an ape because of the way he looked. Oh, yes. Uh, he really wasn't well, too handsome. Well, and he was, after all, in part slain by a member of his own cabinet who conspired with John Wilkes Booth. Hmm. What? position did he have in the cabinet? The Secretary of War, Stan. Stan? I didn't, know uh, I didn't know that either. Well, like this, it says, uh, the transformation of Abraham Lincoln, 1998. Wilson tells of Lincoln's having been raised a Baptist who never outgrew a sense of fatalism, even yes. a nameless sense of doom. Yes. Yes. Well, that can make an impression yeah. on a child's mind, this gloom, right. doom. and. But upon reading a pain work in which a young woman engaged to be married, and while under this engagement she is to speak to speak in plain language, debauched by a ghost, Lincoln, meaning the Virgin Mary, Lincoln developed a new take on the Virgin Mary. <laughs> so uh, it's still, and I think some people are kind of, of iffy about it. They don't, uh, even in atheists, I think some of them still kind of hope there's some, some, something. It's not God, but I, there's... In case of I Lincoln, I wouldn't, I wouldn't catalog him with us, I'm afraid. Well, this, it, it, well, he's got one woman in here who wrote a hymn, and I don't know why he put, meaning the kind you sing in church, you know, <laughs> but, 
But I don't understand why, but, but most of the ones is Gore Vidal, of course. Now, surely everybody knows him. Everybody he's knows he's, him, yes. He's been pretty clear on it. But uh, another interesting uh, unknown atheist would be uh, Joseph Lewis, who wrote this interesting small book on the Ten Commandments. You oh, just brought I all the heavy books you had. I just to myself. Now, which end goes up? <laughs> you, can you help me? I don't know which way it goes. Okay, excuse me. Or shall folks. I just hold it? No, let don't me go take too care far, of you, or you'll be yeah, disconnected. Do it sit on here? Just excuse me, public, while we there you go. Oh, You're while right. we redress, right. <laughs> they'll let me know. I'm sure if it's not okay. That whole anyway, book is about the Ten the Commandments. The whole book is about the Ten Commandments, and it is perfectly fascinating that somebody could spend this much time in that uh, bigger book on the Ten well, Commandments. Yes, that's well, not you, that's not you know, so large. The Jews have volume after volume after volume of commentary and commentary on commentary and yeah. commentary on commentary. Well, on the about, religious stuff, because you can always make that up. What yeah. I don't understand, if the Ten Commandments was mm -hmm. was uh, the voice of God giving you these Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. then how could the Catholics change it, and then now they have their oh, different yeah. ones oh, sure. well, to coincide with what they believe. The you know. and, yeah, there's three, different, right. there's three different versions of the Ten Commandments. There's a, a, a Protestant version, usually credited to the Lutherans. There's a Catholic version, and there's a Jewish version. But, well, if, but if God gave you the, the commandments, then it shouldn't be any different anywhere. Well, you, well, can, you can kind of understand one of them because the Jewish version talks about, you know, we, we got you people out of Israel. And, of course, the, the people who were Christians dealing with the Ten Commandments didn't are not part of the nation of Israel. So that gets edited out. But the difference between the Lutheran one and the Catholic one is how they put the punctuation in because the, the Lutherans want to, and the Protestants want to group the part about having no other gods before me and, and graven images all right close together, uh -huh. and the Catholics want to split them apart because they're often accused because of their statues of saints and so forth mm -hmm. of yes, worshiping graven images by the Protestants. Yeah. This has gone on for years. And I don't care what they say. They, they, yeah, they, they kiss these uh, man-made material Jesus or, yeah. or, or the casket with the bones of... They kiss that. To me, that's worshiping. Oh, it is. I don't understand. But they say, how they oh, can no. Say, oh, no. Oh, well, no. They say, oh, no. It's all uh, what the little God. Dolls all that are all God. the time coming to town all dressed up. Now, who dresses those little dollies? Exactly. God? Come on. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I went with a little bit more about Joseph Lewis here. He made that 1889 to 1968. A lot of these people were alive when I was, but I hadn't, I hadn't known what I was at this time. In 1968, I was just beginning to read things like... Uh, 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 Voltaire? No, no, <laughs> not, no, my first one was Why I'm Not a Christian by Bertrand Russell. That was the first thing that got me really saying, well now, oh yeah, yeah, I am something, because I thought I was sort of in a no man's land, you know? Uh, he was a major representative of atheistic thought and a publisher of atheist and sex education books. Now, that will set the Christian world on its ear. Lewis, as a young person, read Ingersoll and Payne. See, that's your necessity for a good, solid, free thought background. Both, both of those. Uh -huh. He was elected president of Freethinkers of America, which had first been organized in 1915. The Bible Unmasked, 1926, was considered one of his most one of the most shocking books of the day. I think I've got it at home. And I don't remember being really uh, shocked by it because I, by that time I'd read so much stuff about that. I read the Bible for one yeah, well, thing. Talk you wouldn't be shocked. shocked. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing left after that. Okay, Sally. Whoops. Well, I have here a. Uh an account of this, she's a reporter from, this is from Ireland, she's a reporter in Ireland, and her name is, and I'm probably not going to pronounce it right, Emmer O'Kelly. I think the O'Kelly's okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, she wants to know why so many Irish Christians hate her, and they hate her because of her beliefs. Hmm. Well, she does have a fair idea because she gets a lot of hate mail. And she says they call down curses upon her head which range from the blindly violent to the sexually perverted. So she has um, frequently suggested that no religious denomination has the right to have its teaching protected by the force of secular law. 
and that any national constitution which permits such influence to any religious religion becomes defective in practice. That is one definition of the moral and ethical code known as the secular humanist. What That seems to be the source of the hatred. She says that in Ireland, more than 90% of the population professes to be Roman Catholic, yet they seem to be profoundly threatened by genuine humanists. I don't understand why. Humanism is only acceptable to them if they can define it as a kind of watered-down version of Christianity. And again, they always want to make humanism a religion. Mm -hmm. People keep saying we're not a religion. This lady says it's a philosophy. And, and the reality is that secular humanism is... Oh yeah, that's nothing. that lady. Oh yeah, that's good. It's profoundly at odds with all forms of theism, including the Judo-Christian tradition. Well, so this is from Ireland. Ireland is the westernmost part of Europe. And the rest of Europe is abandoning Christianity. And they can see that from there. They visit Europe and they see that there. That most Europeans are, are no longer Christian. They are atheists and humanists. And it's just, and the churches are quietly dying. They're even dying in England. Ooh, uh, people ooh. are, people that the church, they can't keep the church up because people aren't showing up in it. And they aren't contributing well, to it. Good. So like it's Catholic. going away, and that's why they're threatened, because they see this wave to the east of them, and they find it very threatening. Well, and look what they're doing in Ireland. They're fighting with each other over I religion, know. and see? it's been going on years after year after year. That would probably contribute to a rise in humanism, where people on both sides see the hatred and see the fighting, Oh. and simply abandon it. Say, if this is what it's about... Wouldn't that be nice? We're, we're just not going to be in this. I'm not going to hope that people ever get any sense. Look what they did in the last election. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, Catherine, you, no said, hmm? you said earlier that uh, uh, religion has... they have to make it more fun. Yeah. And, you know, like you're saying, there's not... people aren't coming to church in Europe. But in, in the United States, they weren't coming to church either. Now they have, mm -hmm. they have rock and roll. They mm -hmm. have uh, like mariachis, like you said. So mm -hmm. they've got to go into showbiz. Yeah, they really to, are. Well, I gave you the article out of time that time. Remember where they had a big, like a state fair thing, and they had the oh, rock yes. groups and and all of this fun stuff, and uh, but all with the Christian overtones and the Christian songs, of course. And then they have, uh, what do they have? Wrestlers for Jesus and strong men for Jesus and <laughs> boxers for Jesus, which I think is, figures right in. They're Jesus the boxer. <laughs> Why not? They're always at war. Aren't they? Yeah. Oh, shoot. So, um, yeah, they're just, I don't know, this silly business of, of killing people because of some damn fixed idea you've got in your head that nobody can prove. Um, Stupid. Well, oh, I like your big print there. Mm. We, we were supposed to have, have solved that problem a long time ago, first with something called religious toleration, and then... I with, don't want to be tolerant. I'm tired of being <laughs> tolerant. Then with, <laughs> then with religious freedom, and finally uh, in the United States with separation of church and state. And that all came about because of the Thirty Years' War, people killing each other, and they decided a better way to do it would be to simply drop that as an issue for war because religious wars are so nasty. Yes. But oh, people have forgotten, and here we are again, and we could get just <laughs> as nasty again. After all, they are shooting uh, doctors in front of their family, uh, right-to-life people, oh, yeah. and considering yeah, themselves yeah. Which, justified. Well, That's an oxymoron. They want to save lives yeah, by so they kill protecting somebody. these cells, and then they, but they kill people. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, yeah, I mean, yeah. I just can't. I can't go there in their thinking. I just, I just go crazy. I just. <laughs> well, you see, you see what they're doing is they're in their mind they're executing a murderer. They're yeah. just not allowing yeah. a judge and jury to get involved. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, are we on? Uh, Sally, got any more? Yes, secular humanist. Well, I've got, a new, I've got a new, uh, uh, something. Well, I've got this on. Uh, by Paul Kurtz, mm -hmm. the new paradigm, and 
but I've got it. Hmm, it's got to be big, big print. print. Yeah, because like this is so little to look yeah, at. Yeah, I know. But uh, the uh, this is the mark of the humanist. It's the quest for the best that we are capable of achieving in human terms, the bountiful life of excellence and nobility for ourselves and other beings. Now, that doesn't sound bad to me. Mm-mm. And it sounds and so let peaceful. Me, uh, let me ask you, would you be for human happiness? I'm all for it. <laughs> I like a little myself. Okay. And uh, democracy? Mm-hmm. Reliable knowledge? Mm-hmm. And skeptical, you know, you've got to doubt things, yeah. everything. So you I... know, we, even ourselves. Look at that thing that I uh, did that little skit on, and I thought it was true, and y'all had already seen it on the internet, and it was uh, one of those legends. Yes, oh, yeah, urban, urban legends. Urban yeah. legends. <laughs> so you have to, you know, have to question well, everything. To that, that part about happiness, somebody said the definition of a Puritan is somebody who's deeply worried that somewhere That's someone is having, having some fun. fun. Oh, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. right. That, that's uh-huh. intolerable to some people. Yes, it is. Don't yeah. want them to have fun because yeah, they can't have that? any fun. Uh, I mean, I think that fun. keeps you well having some fun. It certainly does. Yeah. Okay, and of course, they, uh, he is, uh, this is humanism, is uh, concerned with the secular city. It wants to separate the church or the mosque or the temple from the state, politics, and theology, and morality from religion. Why they equate the two things, I don't know, because they do more harm in the name of religion than uh, that is certainly not moral. Well, the only way you can kill thousands of people is in the name of a great virtue. You can't do it any other way. Yeah. Well, the people that were killed in, in New York. 9/11. I see Bob that Kurtz was got a nice write-up in Who here. Who did? Paul Kurtz. Paul Kurtz. Mm-hmm. Oh, see? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Your guy right there from the uh, secular humanist. So people. he's also in hell. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. Big time. Two pages in hell. <laughs> That's pretty far in. Yep, certainly is. Now I suppose we'll go back to the. Uh, Want to go back to some of the people that people don't know are able. Yeah, I see all kinds of flags would, in there. That, that. Yeah, how about Catherine Hepburn? Now, how many people knew that she was an atheist? But they never thought about it. Went to her movies, loved them, loved her, and she says, "I'm an atheist, and that's that." Now I yeah. like get you know. Let's but she get did. It over that's with. <laughs> pretty clear statement. Yeah, <laughs> but she did say it when she was old. Well, let's see. It doesn't really say. Hepburn told a reporter for the Ladies' Home Journal. Well, that's a good publication to tell you're an atheist. Wow. The Academy Award actress, whose name was often mentioned as Spencer Tracy's, added, I believe there's nothing we can know except that we should be kind to each other and do what we can for other people. I think that's very sweet. A biography by Barbara Leeming. In, in 1995, reports that when 13, uh, when 13 Hepburn... 13 at Hepburn. 13? Maybe at age It doesn't 13? say. Reports that when 13 Hepburn, when 13, comma, Hepburn discovered the body, he doesn't have one, uh, discovered the body of her 15-year-old brother, Tom, who had slowly strangled himself with a noose. The Hepburn... Okay, well, I'm going to have to interrupt you oh, because we're over? out of time. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Tragedy. And uh, this has been Free Thought Forum. Uh, we're moving to a new day and time in 2003. Got it right. Got it right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is Hugh Henry for Free Thought Forum. I'm your host. I think as I please, and this gives me pleasure. My conscience decrees, this right I must treasure. My thoughts will not cater to Duke or dictator. No person can be.